A good morning, Jamaica High. To everybody on this earth. Yeah, how she likes that one, Jamaica High. I know I sure does. I hope she all does too. <laughs> I got a crazy video today. Beautiful blue sky. Sun shining, no clouds. It rained last night. For about, or this morning should I say, for about 10-15 minutes. Nice mangoes I found underneath the tree. And I'll probably be eating those here in a minute. Maybe not though. You know why? This is what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, in Jamaica. <sighs> Crazy life here. It's a good one. Y you'll enjoy it. Trust me, it gets better every day, it seems like. <sighs> Alright, this is what's going on, everybody. You see, the Jamaican guys like white, fat women. Not white, skinny women. Big old, chunky, fat, white women. They love the big ass, okay? The bigger the ass, the more smiles they have on their faces. Okay? Now, every Jamaican guy I've met so far tells me to bring a white woman to Jamaica for them. So ladies, if you want to marry a nice, handsome Jamaican black guy, contact me and I'll introduce you to everybody that wants to meet some beautiful, fat, white woman. Yeah. Now, American white guys and Every else who's white on this earth, because there's a shitload of white people on this earth from different nationalities. All the Jamaican women, uh, almost all of them, I'm not going to say all of them, but almost all of them I've met so far, they want a white guy. They don't want no black guy in Jamaica. They want some white guy from another nation. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you, everybody. I've had 18-year-olds all the way up to 22, 23 year olds saying, Gringo, I want you. And I said, Man, I'm too old. I'm 55. You're a little, you're younger than my children are. It don't matter the age, Gringo. It doesn't matter the age. You're good looking, and that's all that counts. I said, I'm ugly, man. Hells, I'm so damn ugly. Ye gots to get some glasses. <laughs> Well, today, well, last night, should I say, I go to my favorite bar. Oh, and trust me, all the bars you go to, you can light up a marijuana cigarette. And yesterday, I was in the bar, and I was rolling me up a cigarette of marijuana, and this lady walks in. And she orders a Pepsi. And she looks at me, she goes, Damn, that's some good smell of marijuana you have there. I have a big old bag in my lap, okay? A big bag in my lap. And I go, thank you. I says, you smoke marijuana? She goes, no, no, no. I just love the smell of it. And she goes, you has a good day now. And I said, used to, used to. You has a good day now, too. So she leaves. And everybody starts laughing. I says, what's going on? What's so funny? They says, that was the police sergeant. The big honcho in the police department and not obey. And I just went, are you joking me? And I says, no, you can't be that, a higher person than that. 
I said, hell, thank God I met her here <laughs> instead of in jail. So, that was a good life story. That was a good one. I thought you enjoy, would enjoy that one. I know I did. And so, I'm smoking a joint and give this joint with this one gentleman, dreadlocks, really long dreadlocks, just loves that smoke and that marijuana, that ganja, that herb, whatever you want to call it. And he, I says, I mean, I was looking at a lot of women. God, look at this woman. Look at that woman. Hello, women. And they just look at me like, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. You waving at me? And they just turn their heads and laugh and just smile and just put their heads up in the air and shake their asses around. <laughs> I see this one tall, slender lady with, yeah, big ass. Real slender, but you know those athletic asses that you see on on the African American women or the African women or the Jamaican women or any nationality. They got that nice little athletic ass with nice beautiful thin legs. And I said, look at her, man. She got one nice looking ass on that woman, man. She did. Real tall, slender body. Friend calls her over. Hey, hey, come over. She walks out. She just beautiful, man. Smiles from ear to ear. And he goes, I want you to meet someone, my friend. And he goes, his name is the Gringo. She goes, oh, hi, how are you doing? And says, you want beer? And she goes, sure, I'll drink a wine. They got this thing that's called a tonic wine. And a lot of women like it, but a lot of women like that cream rum. So, men, if you offer a woman a beer, I was told last night from some friends, the women are going to buy the most expensive drink. They ain't going to take the cheap, the cheap drink. They're going to buy the most expensive drink. So, remember that, gringo. So, yeah, I found that out already. So, I don't need to remember that one. <laughs> So I get to know her, asking her questions like I do everybody else, and I guess her name just like I do everybody else, because I'm a good guesser in ages. I can guess anybody's age to as close to one or two years. That's how good I am with women. Of course, I've talked to so many women on earth, so many millions, not millions, I've seen millions of women, but... Yeah, I've talked to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of women. Because I'm an ugly looking white skinny guy. I know I'll never get the most beautiful woman on earth. So I go, uh, you have a daughter? And she goes, yeah. And I said, well, your daughter's two years old. And she goes, well, man, you, you know age is good. And I said, well, just just curiosity, you know. I know, I know how people react in life. So today, I, well, last night, should I say, I went ahead and went grocery shopping with her and bought a shitload of food like I've done a shitload of times in my life and, and have a shitload of parties with strangers I've never met before and go buy them a shitload of alcohol and a shitload of marijuana and with that whole bunch of shitload of food that I buy. And I go out and party with these families. And I've done it in Jamaica, and I've done it all over Mexico, and I've done it all over USA, and I'm going to do it all over in Jamaica. Still. Well, her birthday is going to be next month, August 20th. And she's going to turn 21, and I said, sweet. 21 I says what are you gonna do on your birthday and she goes I don't know and I says trust me I can find you something to go do in life that you would never forget the rest of your life so so she goes like what and I says well first I can go take you to Mexico 
can fly over there and just enjoy life. But uh, I found something better, and hopefully I can afford this trip. I don't know how it's going to happen, but the air flight's going to have to be cheap. <laughs> But uh, she tells me, here she goes, yeah, my mama, she lives in Trinidad. I said, Trinidad? What the hell is she doing in Trinidad? She goes, she's been living there for four years, and she does not like Jamaica. What? I said, you know what? That would be a badass birthday present for you and for your mother to see you on your birthday. Her eyes just lit up. She goes, I'll find out how much the ticket's going to cost this green guy. I says, find out. If I have the money, we'll go. So I'm going to be dating a 20-year-old, a yeah, younger than my daughters, a 20-year-old Jamaican woman with a child two years old. But I told her, I says, when a white man gets a divorce, that white man, that every white man that I've ever met in life that has a divorce, as a matter of fact, any guy that I've ever met in life that has a divorce or had one, they all look for a very, very, very young woman. At 18 years old to 23 years old and no higher than that. And this is my friends and they're in their... 80s, 70s, 60s, 50 year old men, 40, 30, and they all dating 18 to 23 year old men or women. Now, the sorry, I'm getting a little excited telling you this story. I'm one of those people. I, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I have a lot of old friends on YouTube. And I treat you like my sister. I give you lots of hugs, lots of kisses on emails because I respect everybody's age. It doesn't matter if you're 110 years old, if you're one year old. I'm going to all treat you the same way in life. I'm going to give you all my love and all my respect to each and every one of you. But for me to sit there and have a chance to raise up a child when the child's two years old because that child's learning every day. You teach that child anything you want to do in life and when that child grows up it's going to be one smart child. Well that's what I plan on doing again. My children are really smart. Of course I had a worthless wife that divorced me and she didn't do half the things I told her to do with my children in life. While I was working 16 days a week, or 16 hours a day, yeah, 16 days a week, should I say, because it seemed like I was almost working 16 days out of the week. I was working double time with a little bit more. I was working 16, 17 hours a day. And traveling time, get up into three hours a day traveling time. I only got two hours of sleep each day. And I went back to work. That's what I did for a living for most of my life. This is the reason why I'm in Jamaica right now. I'm not doing a goddamn thing. Because I worked and busted my ass off since I was 16 years old. Paid my taxes. Did my dues. But I don't pay no more taxes. Fuck goddamn government. Fuck supporting the fucking goddamn Illuminati and their one world order. Fuck them. I don't want a one world currency, okay? Nor should you want a one world currency, a one world government, a one world fucked up religion that they all preach about us having to go do in life. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to film the, va the village. In my next film, I'm going to show the whole trip up to where she lives at, okay? It's called Nine Mile or Long Road is where we're going to go at. It's going to be a nice little trip today. I don't know what's going to happen. I got to go, though. I has to go into town and, and meet this one dreadlock guy. And yes, I do walk around a not obey with my spliff in my mouth. 
People look at me and <clears throat> goes, damn, that's one big spliff, man. That's a Bob Marley spliff you got in your mouth. And I just laugh at him and say, thank you. Well, thanks for watching all my videos. And they might be fucked up, but there's some good shit that's involved in some of these videos. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> women and men, if you love colored women like, I love every nationality on there. It doesn't matter what color skin you are or what face you have on you. I don't care. I love all of you. I enjoy your company, your beauty, each and every one of you women. But I got to settle down. I got to go get married again. I got to go raise up a child and, and give some woman, some very young woman, a future that when I do die, she's going to be very proud of what she's done for me in life. Enjoy everybody your life, because you only has one life to live. Tell your second life in the stars, or burning in hell forever with me. Of course, I'll get to see you in the stars also, remembers that. The ones who uh, do live a life like I live every day. We will travel the stars and see what the rest of what God has created for all of us to go see in our second life. But also in this first life too.